What is going on guys, Victor here, and it is absolutely beautiful out here. We are in Sebastian, Florida right now, and we're about to hop on the boat to go fishing with our good buddy, Topwater Trev, who just started a charter company. So we're gonna go fishing, help him out, do a little business promo, try to get on some monster redfish, snook. Before we move on with today's video, this video is actually sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. I'm someone who hates carrying a ton of stuff. Like I have all my rods, my tackle, my camera bag. The last thing I want is that big bulky leather wallet. And this is the solution to that. This is a minimalist style wallet, all RFID blocking. They come with either money straps or money clips. Like this right here is the money strap. And they come in a lot of really cool designs. Like this is the burnt titanium, by far my favorite design. Um, they come in aluminum, they got like tiki uh, prints, all sorts of really cool stuff. And the neat thing about this is it's literally, look at how compact that is. It fits in the palm of my hand. Now, you know, if, if you put your wallet in your back pocket, and you're trying to sit down, it's not bulging out of your pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and link them below and you guys can save 10% off all Ridge products using my code Landshark, which will be linked below and on the screen here. But enough talking about wallets, let's go catch some fish. I forgot all of the camera batteries for today's trip, but very first fish of the day is this 30 inch snook, which is going home for a catch, clean and cook. See, that's a great way to start the day. Yes, sir. Isn't it? Top of the morning. Top of the morning. That's the name of the charter company and that's what you guys are gonna get. So um, we didn't get any of the fight on video because we're trying to conserve the it was camera batteries. It's five seconds. And we literally just got here, so we're gonna go ahead, put this guy in the cooler and try to get some more snook, reds, and like I said, there's not gonna be too much footage because I forgot all the camera batteries, so we're kinda just have to pick up the cameras as we hook up. If that, are you? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> back to back to back fish. Slot snook? No, it's big. Big? Oh! Huge. Huge? <laughs> Huge. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a big one. And the cool thing about refuge is they just dog down. This guy's hooked up to this right now. Well, it's turning out to be a pretty good morning, I'd say. Uh-oh. Can you get mine too? You might get it, Joe. Nice. Yes, uh, that would be sweet because I'm not going to do it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you want him to net it and to fight it? Oh! Not with that net, I've tried it and I looked like an idiot. Oh! Dude, that's epic. This one's really red. Trev's got himself a big old redfish. <laughs> oh, he's got close spots. He doesn't want to come inside. No, though. he's stubborn as hell. Look at that. I'm nervous about this. <laughs> I've netted a lot of fish, but not like this. Good, Brooke. Good, good, good. Hell yeah. Nice job, dude. Thank you, buddy. You need the pliers? Yep. Here. I'm trying not to rip them all out. Trev's got himself a big old redfish. You guys hear it croaking? What do you say? Over 20. Nice one. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get her. Let's get her in and not dunk the trolling motor. Well, the good thing about your fish was it was really green as it came in, too, you know? So, got the current coming in. You want to revive them in the cut. There you go. Going that way. Sometimes the current's going to keep pushing them flat. You want to try to keep their heads in the current. I was just moving them to try to get them moving a little bit. Dude, 
So slot snuck, two stud red so That's far. That's all I wanted and you and you caught it, so. <laughs> When I was coming up here last night, I asked him, I said, how have the slot snook been? And he said, every single, every single fish has been what? Like 27 and a half inches, oh, right? Oh yeah, 27 and a half inches, then you caught a 32 and a half, or whatever or no, it was, 32? Like 30 and a half. Oh, it was 30? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was bigger. Yeah. So, and then if you guys don't know, in Florida, where we're fishing right now, the there's a slot size for snook. Um, that first fish I caught, it's gotta be between 28 and 32 inches. Four inch slot is not a lot of room for air, so it's always lucky when you get one. Okay, I think it's finally my turn for a red. What do you say? I think so. It's been overdue. I don't know, this one's not thing. fighting as much as your guys is. Ooh, I get another slot. I mean, <gasps> it's another slot! It's another slot! <laughs> yeah. Nice. Right in, right in. I can't catch a red, but I'm catching all the slots today. What do we got, baby? What do we got? He's 28, 29, oh, 28 and a half. He's slot all day. Yep. Oh, yeah. 29. Snook Slayer, I'm, I'm baby. The, snook, the slot Slayer. Mustad, big gun hook, 40 pound leader. I think I said I'll show you guys in a little bit. <laughs> what oh we're my doing. God. He almost went back in. Two main things we're after out here. Big redfish, which are not going to be in slot, and then um, snook. These guys right here, and these are perfect eating size. So we got two for the cooler now. I really want to get a big red, but Babe got one, Trev got two. Just got to get lines back in the water. All right, guys, we just got our third slot snook, which means we got our limit. Ready? Look at that. They look beautiful in there. They do look beautiful in there. <laughs> <laughs> so Bricky just got the last one that we're allowed to keep since it's one per person per day in the state of Florida. And they're pretty much all the same size. They're like 29 to 30 inches. And it always amazes me, Sebastian fish, like the snook that you catch around here are just so fat and just stocking compared to the snook on the west coast or the snook you catch down south by us. I think it's just the environment they live in and there's just a lot of food. but. Um, couldn't ask for a better day in an hour to get our three limit of snook. All thanks to Trev. Hey, you guys are the ones behind the reel, you know? You guys are the ones making it happen. I just caught the bait, drove the boat. But that little trolling motor, that, this that's is the man. This actually catches the fish. It is. Yeah. It's about 2,000 bucks, and you get one, <laughs> and you just start catching, and it, they, it comes with this. So this is what we're doing. The standard Sebastian Inlet kind of drift and rig. Well, the way we fish, first of all, we came out here, it was incoming tide, right? The trolling motor has a technology built in and it keeps you in one spot. And there's, you guys see, there's swells and everything and it's really important to be able to have a flat spot to be able, something that keeps you in one little area, not too noisy with an engine. Trolling motor is a must. 30, 40, 50 pound braid on 6,000 to 10,000 size reels. And um, 40 pound fluorocarbon seem to do the trick for us today and then this is something that is like notorious for fish in sebastian inlet is split shot weights we have quarter ounce eighth ounce split shots depending on the current like a foot two feet above your leader the prime time bait where we caught most of the fish on were croakers it looks similar to this but they get bigger they're a lot more hard and I don't know if you guys can hear it, but they literally croak. They have a, a deep, loud drum. And a lot of snook fishermen think that's why snook and redfish like them so much, because they, I don't know if it's because it attracts them or it pisses them off, but it just send, puts out these crazy vibrations. So let me crack an egg and knowledge on you for what I was told was Go that, um, you know, Kroger's eat snook eggs. That's pretty, a lot of people know that, right? So Kroger's eat snook eggs. So the snook are kind of like, what, what would be called like genetically defending their well, just like inherently yeah. over time they're programmed to even when they're not hungry they're gonna kill that croaker and that's one thing i've noticed you know how many times we get hit and they don't commit to it right it's like they almost just want to kill it instead of yeah it. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly they just crush that thing up spit it out and um, yeah that that to me that's the biggest reason is you'll get a bite on a croaker than anything else because it's a threat to the snook where none of these other bait fish are, are a threat uh-huh see Trev spitting out knowledge for you guys. Cracking eggs. 
just like a 30-4050 live bait hook. This is a must add big gun hook. Really good hook for what we're doing. And then I just have it on the Conley 6.6 jigging rod. Super versatile rod, because if we did want to run offshore or something, the vertical jig with this, catch dolphin with it, and it's perfect for redfish and snook. I was starting to get worried about this fish. I must have been fishing this croaker for, I don't know, like 15 minutes, no hits. Everyone's getting tight around me, and it finally got eaten. Is oh, it? it's a red. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's a red. Top of the morning. And I'm the only one of the day who hasn't gotten a red yet. Oh yeah, those big head shakes, redfish all day. Well, you're wearing your redfish shirt. I know, you'd think. The guy wearing the redfish shirt would catch a redfish. It's a snook. That's a big snook too. <laughs> I can't get away from the snook. Big boy. Woo! Look at that. Well, we already have three snook in the cooler and this one is right at 32 inches, which is your upper limit, which ideally you'd want the biggest one possible, but we gotta let this one go. Bye bye, Mr. Snook. Not bad. I seriously can't get away from the Snook. I, thought I don't know what's going on. I thought he was gonna be 34. That was the fattest slot ever. It was. Did you know? Did you want to change shirts? Change shirt. Oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you put a Snook shirt on, then you'll have a red. Fish. I don't know what's going on. I'm just scaring the redfish away. I don't feel like the biggest redfish you've ever caught. Yeah. So Brooke is just killing the boys in terms of redfish. I'm not gonna put her footage in my video, so if you guys wanna see her video, I'll have it linked below if she has posted it already because she has so much redfish action. I'm trying to... Triple header, baby! That was awesome. Awesome, all at the same time. 28 inches, tad too big. Here, you. You. Oh. You're up, ready? Hell babe? yeah, I'm ready, yeah. Woo, there he is, son. Don't lose him. <laughs> are you guys gonna take an epic double pick? Yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Double reds. Double, Double reds. Double reds, boy. Finally got my redfish. We had the Finally. just most incredible triple hookup. All three rods went off at the same time and we landed them all. With I had to net Brooks fish while I was fighting mine and then we got Trebs and Brooks and couldn't ask for a better triple. It was just, it, today is just awesome. That's simply put, just awesome. It would have been cool if mine was legal. I know, Brooks was one inch too big to keep. That would have been like the perfect size redfish because redfish have to be 18 to 27 inches. So you pre preferably want like a 26 inch, 27 inch fish. They were everywhere. So close, babe, so It close. was like 27 and a half too. Oh, little red, little red. Like, All right, guys, this might be the only slot red of the day. Come on, give me the net, baby. Come on, Trev. He looks a little big. No, I think he's smaller than the one you caught. Nah, he looks the same. He looks the same size. It might be the same one. Please be a slot. Nah, Please he's big. Slot. He's big. I don't know. He's close. We're going to measure him. We're going to measure him. How about that? Let's Look let the tape hook. measure the size. Look at that hook. I'm not going to complain about catching a redfish. But I did want it to be 27 inches, which would be upper slot. Such a beautiful fish. And we have honestly, it's gotten really slow. Like this is what, the first fish we've had in an hour? Yeah. No, not that long. 29. So we're going to let him go. So cool. I love the way they croak. Yeah. Come on, buddy. Yeah, we got, we got a couple. I'm just holding the tail. And then I wait 
I wait until he's ready to go. You hold that big brute tail, and when he wants to go, I'll let you know. He'll just run off like that. Alrighty, guys, I think that's pretty much the end of the fishing portion of this video. Big shout out to Trev, once again, for putting us on the fish. And name of your charter? Top of the Morning Charters. Which will be linked below, of course, right? Yes, sir, if you link it. I will link okay. it. So if you guys are interested, you guys saw we caught a ton of fish. Not only did we catch big bruiser reds, but also stuff for the dinner table. Three slot snook. Babe got a bunch as well. I caught three reds and one snook. Really cool. Yes. Really good day. So now I want to show you one of my favorite things. Sebastian Inlet is super scenic, and especially with the drone. So I'll see you guys in the air. Big thank you to Topwater Trev for taking us out once again. I'll have all of his stuff linked below. Now, he took a snook home. Bricky and I took two slot snook home, which I'm about to flay up for you guys. But before we move on, in the last video I posted, it was an unboxing video and I gave away an Abbott JX Raptor on my Instagram, which is still open by the way you guys can enter. Now, I realize not everybody has an Instagram and if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I should do a YouTube giveaway. So since this video sponsor was the Ridge Wallet, I'm going to be giving away one of these wallets, which is my favorite wallet. All you have to do to enter is go on theridgewallet.com and pick out the style you want. For example, this is titanium burnt with a money strap. Pick out what you want, go back to this video, comment it below, and the only one that is not open for entry is the Damascus steel color. That's it, comment it below, in an upcoming video, I'll pick out the winner. Now let's fillet this fish. You guys might call me a nerd, but I always find it really fascinating just to like observe a fish's body. And snook are like the perfect flat bottom predator. You see how their body lays completely flat like that? And they are very still and they ambush things. They'll open this huge mouth and they create this big suction and they just slurp up predators. That's what they were doing to our croakers. That's just my little spiel. Now enjoy the little GoPro footage, we'll speed it up, and then we'll check the stomach. Now the snook didn't have anything in their stomach, so welcome to the kitchen. We're about to whip up a nice meal. And I'm gonna be making seared sea scallops along with our snook. We got Brooks family coming over, and I'm not gonna do a whole spiel on the butcher box. If you guys have seen it in a few in videos we've done before, it's basically a meat seafood delivery service that comes once a month to your house. And these sea scallops are actually from the butcher box. Like I said, I don't want to really dwell into it, but if you guys want to check them out, I'll have them linked in the description box below, and they're always hooking up my subscribers with different deals and stuff. But we are going to be doing a bunch of steak dinners in the near future. So I'm going to go ahead and drain these. The thing I'm most excited about tonight is I'm making a risotto, which I've never attempted risotto, but we're about to. So come over here. We've got portobello mushrooms, and I have my saute pan with some olive oil. We're going to add a ton of mushrooms in here because we're making a mushroom risotto. Now, the stars of the show, sea scallops, which are much bigger than bay scallops. I have went scalloping with Brooks family, a ton of fun, but the amount of meat you get on one little bay scallop compared to this, what do you think, Brooke? Like, at least four, basically? Three, three times that. Sorry. Three times that. Well, some of them are a bit bigger, but very excited to try this. So, salt. 
We're keeping it very simple with both the scallops and snook. What I really want to shine is the searing process. So that brown caramelization that you get on the um, top of the scallop and the fish. Garlic powder. I guess I forgot garlic powder on this, didn't I? Yes, you did. And when you're searing scallops, your scallops need to be completely dry. Just like with fish, if you have any water, it's really gonna impede the process of the searing and that um, caramelization process. You're not gonna get that nice brown crust like you want. Okay, all of that's flipped. Now we flip these guys. And the same thing with my snook. My snook is very dry. So we got our mushrooms here, all sweated out, about to take them off the heat. Now the key thing I have researched when it comes to risotto is you have to have your chicken stock or whatever liquid you're cooking your rice in hot. So I brought mine up to a boil, I'm gonna put it to low, but you're constantly adding liquid, which you guys will see. We'll get into that a little bit later, but we're gonna go ahead, take our mushrooms and put them in something we can use for later. So I have a stainless steel mixing bowl and I'm removing all the juice too as well. But I'm not gonna clean the pan because I want all those flavors in there. Now we're gonna add some olive oil. Oil's nice and hot. I'm gonna add some yellow onion. Okay, we got our onions nice and brown. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. And then we have our Boreo rice. I'm just gonna toast this rice up just a little bit. Then we're gonna add some white wine, some Pinot Grigio, deglaze our pan. And I'm gonna wait until all of the rice soaks up all of the wine that we added. Now we're gonna add a ladle full of our chicken stock to our rice at a time. So you're never really fully saturating the rice and this is how it's gonna come out creamy at the end. So it's laborsome and it takes a long time but it's supposed to be really good. We have our pan nice and hot. Now, since I don't have skin on this fish, I'm gonna make some artificial skin I'm gonna do one side just with flour so it crisps up. And when we're gonna sear it, we're gonna cook it two thirds of the way on this side so it gets nice and brown. Very hot oil. And dry fish fillets. So this was the bloodline side. Now we're gonna flip them over and you guys are gonna see the nice brown crust we got on those fish. Even though it doesn't have any skin, we got a good brown crust. Time to attempt to sear the scallops. This kind of makes me nervous because they're so small and fragile. But, you want to get a nice brown crust on them. That's why we're using plenty of oil. Now, back to the risotto. That's about the consistency. It's al dente. Now we're going to add our mushrooms back in. Add some Parmesan cheese. We're gonna give it a good mix. Add some fresh parsley to our risotto. And the last final touch is some tomatoes. Are some tomatoes. We 
guys have no idea how nervous I was to make these steered scalps, especially on a stainless steel pan. I thought they were going to stick for sure, but look at that. That's beautiful. Don't they? And I cut them mostly on one side. Turn the heat off, and now we're just going to finish them off with some butter. And just baste them in the butter. So I took them off the heat, like I said, I'm going to stick them in the oven and just let them swim in all that butter. And our risotto, nice and creamy, I'm going to take that off the heat. We're just going to finish off our snack with a little bit of melted butter. You guys know me, I'm always trying to get better at that plating, so here we go. We got our parsley cream sauce, which I didn't show you guys that I made, because I was very stressed out today. But, there's that. We have some microgreens that I've been trying to get into finally. Put some microgreens right there. Now, our risotto. Piece of fish, and then some scallops. Right on top of those microgreens and our parsley cream sauce. Check this out. I'm the last one to get to the table because I was doing B-roll, but empty plate, <laughs> empty plate, empty plate, and about to be an empty plate. And I tell you what, I was a little bit skeptical about um, sea scallops because I've never made them before and I've never had them frozen before, but they were seriously so good. So a little bit of that parsley cream sauce, perfectly seared on the outside and just so delicious. And one thing you guys may have heard me say before is I'm not a huge fan of really thick cuts of fish, but this snook was so tender. Look at that. I mean, just cuts through beautifully. And I think it was a neat way to do the searing on the outside with the flour because like I said, normally I like to cook fish with the skin on because it gets crispy but I made that artificial skin with the flour and it came out so good. Look at that. Beautiful, white, flaky meat. It's just so good. So, what'd you guys think? Well, it was another uh, fancy dinner at Chef Victor's house. As always, delicious. Mom, empty plate, <coughs> full belly. <laughs> <laughs> Fish? Um, I haven't had snook in a really long time and it reminds me, reminded me how good it is, but the crispiness just put it over the top. Mom, you really like scallops. How do you like the scallops? I really liked them. A little bit of crunch on them and that sauce, really good. Enjoyed it. I think we've basically had every single thing in the butcher box so far and the one thing we haven't had yet is scallops and we actually have a couple bags of scallops in the freezer. We've just been kind of waiting for a good time to make them, and they were really good. Um, the seared that Victor did on them was really good, really delicious. And then the snook, amazing. Like Victor was saying about thick cuts of fish, I actually don't usually like like really thick cuts of fish like that, and it was so good, and that crispy layer of the flour searedness was really delicious too. And it was so plain, but so flavorful. I, I, you saw me, I used salt, pepper, garlic powder, yeah. and flour, that's it. Very good. And the risotto was also really good. It was all just really good. Thank you. <laughs> good job. Thank you. 
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And two things, well, three things. Check out ButcherBox if you guys haven't already, linked below. Don't forget to enter that Ridge Wallet giveaway. Like I said, guys, all you have to do is go on their website, pick out the style you want, and comment below, and that is literally your entry for this giveaway. And I wanted to make it fair. As the next eight weeks, I'm gonna be doing giveaways on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, but I wanna have a level playing field and have some just for YouTube to give back to you guys, because I now know not everyone has Instagram or Facebook. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in that next video.